Did you really think that you could just fly about the realm trying to steal my brother's throne at no cost? I will not fight you. I came as a messenger, not a warrior. Fight would be little challenge. No. I want you to put out your eye. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In a video I did a while back, I saw some comments about Lucerus and someone mentioned how he deserved what happened to him over Storm's End. So I thought it'd be an interesting topic to look at because there are shades of gray in the conflict between Aemond and his nephew Lucerus. This is all based on the events on the show and not the version in Fire and Blood. So let's dive in. Aemond, of course, was teased a bit when he was younger. This, though, wasn't something that Lucerus did alone. If anything, it was Aemon's brother Aegon, who was the ringleader in all of that. So, we found one for you. A dragon. How? The gods provide. <laughs> Behold, the, the pink, pink dread. dread. <laughs> Be sure to mount her carefully. First flight's always rough. <laughs> All of this, though, can be chalked up to typical pranks and the rites of passage for kids growing up. The real problems began after Aemon claimed Vagar. When he returned, he was an instigator. It's him. It's me. Vagar is my mother's dragon. Your mother's dead. And Vagar has a new rider now. She was mine to claim. Then you should have claimed her. Maybe your cousins can find you a pig to ride. Would suit you. Of course, Reyna and Bela are both mourning the loss of their mother, so emotions are running high. Those all poured out when they went after Aemon for this insult. Aemon, though, is right in that a dragon is not passed down as an inheritance with the Targaryens, but it's to be claimed. It's a mutual decision between dragon and rider, and Vagar ended up accepting Aemon after, well, putting him through quite a rigorous test in the skies above Driftmark, in one of the best scenes from season one. This fight, though, is a four-on-one battle, which immediately puts Aemon in a defensive position, even if he's older and larger than the others. He took a pretty good beating in all this, too. And although he did threaten them with a rock, he never used it, and most of his punches were to defend himself. In fact, when he's standing before them with the rock, it's a warning to the others. He's basically saying, I'll use this if I have to against the four of you but he never went on the offensive. <laughs> Yet, they keep charging him. Still, this all wouldn't have been a big deal, just a childhood fight, if Jace hadn't pulled a knife. That's when it all crossed the line. It's a four-on-one fight, and he's going to a weapon, too. Eamon is able to foil his attack, and the knife goes to the ground. Yet, the brothers then push it even further. Jace throws sand in Aemon's eyes, momentarily blinding him, and then Lucerus goes at him with the knife, with Aemon, of course, losing his eye. Despite Aemon's line about it being a fair exchange with him having lost an eye for gaining a dragon, this was a traumatizing experience, and both Jace and Lucerus pushed things much too far in the fight, one in which Aemon largely did show restraint. For years, this incident festered in Aemon's mind, it's naturally at the core of his resentment for his nephews, and particularly for Lucerus. Still, as horrible as this incident was, it has to be taken into account that they were kids. Where additional problems come in, though, is that Lucerus doesn't appear to have learned anything from the fight that cost his uncle an eye. Jace, to his credit, was trying to bring the family together at Viserys' last dinner when he offered this toast. To Prince Aegon and Prince Aemond, we have not seen each other in years but i have fond memories of our shared youth and as men i hope we may yet be friends and allies to you and your family's good health dear uncles it also needs to be mentioned that jace did that just after aegon had taken a jab at him lucerus though doesn't display the same sort of common sense and even thinks it's funny to laugh at aemon when a pig is brought to the table he's responsible for the eye patch his uncle is wearing yet he thinks a childhood prank is still funny enough to laugh in his face. This is idiotic. Aemon could beat up Lucerus with one hand tied behind his back, let alone the fact that his dragon is just a little bigger than Lucerus's. 
And sure, Luceris is still young here. It's, he's around 14 at this point in the story, but his behavior is foolish and unnecessary. It also came on the heels of his older brother's conciliatory toast. Then all of this leads to Eamon's strong toast. Each of them handsome, wise. Strong. After all of this, no one is going to be hanging around for dessert. It's possible if Lucerus had at some point apologized for what he did as a child that some of the edge could have been taken off Eamon's animosity. I doubt that Eamon would have ever welcomed Lucerus with open arms, but the boiling hatred that led to the events over Storm's End perhaps could have been quelled a bit. The trouble is, is that Lucerus acting like a punk at the dinner sparked Eamon's rage. So at the very least, you don't try to instigate the guy whose eye you took out. He didn't find Eamon someone to laugh at when he reached Storm's End, though, did he? So did Lucerus deserve to die? No, of course not. But then Eamon also didn't deserve to lose an eye in that fight. These sequence of events were well presented in House of the Dragon to show how tensions can mount when conflict remains unresolved, and that conflict leads to then the next incident and the next, and in our case, eventually war. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're interested in more on House of the Dragon and A Song of Ice and Fire, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.